today's video I'm going to show you exactly what I did with Lynn and how she changed her golf swing completely by sort of simply understanding exactly what the hips are supposed to be doing. Let's get stuck into it. So Lynn's swing generally on the grand schemes of things looked okay. It just to me it looked like there was quite a lot of moving parts going on and particularly in impact it just looked a little bit flippy the flight scope backed that up as well that you know she was putting in decent amount of club head speed but not getting as much out of it as she potentially could do now flippy just means for those of you that are unaware that the sort of club head is getting to the golf ball prior to the hands this just makes that sort of contact just not very good Excessive movement I would also highlight relative to just a lot of sort of hip action and a lot of sort of moving parts and they just look slightly out of sync. So the first thing that I wanted to do was understand and explain to Lynn that kind of less is more and what we tend to see with the majority of professional golfers is just not excessively moving in the backswing position similar to kind of what's coming up onto the screen now. Now just as a side note if you guys are interested in online lessons I'm actually offering this type of service based on your golf swing as well. Okay so how do you do less and get more out of it? Well it comes very much down to understanding what you're trying to do with your body and a great way to practice is actually to use a wedge. So if I place this on the ground, I didn't use the wedge in the lesson, but what I was doing is I was resisting uh, Lynn's nature and, and temptation to excessively sort of, I would say, straighten the leg. To be more specific, what Lynn was sort of doing was turning more over the leg. And this just basically means that the pelvis was going more in this sort of manner. So her head would move over towards her trail side and this sort of saturated her arms too far behind her generally again just you know kind of meaning that was going to lend itself to this flippy movement so what i wanted to do is i wanted to kind of get this sense that you're trying to resist and push pressure in towards the ground and that's why a wedge is a really good training aid that you can do on your own because it kind of just forces you to keep this leg a little bit more flexed now what started to happen is when you do this you'll find an immediate reaction for this trail leg to resist against the pelvis's rotation and all of a sudden you'll start to get a much stronger activation in the glute immediately in that sort of early backswing position roughly by the time the hands are about sort of midway back through the belt line so to speak or through the belly button line now this was a big big thing now not only is that a fantastic drill and something you can do another one which i like is mike bender's wall drill which i've seen on his instagram chat and what he does is he encourages his students to actually literally swing against the wall now the reason why i think this drill is so clever is because again it stops golfers doing this similar to lynn's nature turning over the leg club plowing into the wall and what it does is it teaches you to get your hands much more in front of your chest to swing the club up the wall it essentially means that you're going to have to have the same pivoting action that I've just discussed by doing the foot wedge. So there's two great drills there for you. One which I actually did with Lynn, which was the wall one, which will give you fantastic feedback, especially if you're not necessarily pivoting correctly. So once we'd worked on those drills for a short while, we started to gain much more control of the backswing position. The hands were much more in front of the chest in the backswing position. Lynn was operating in a much more centered position, but still triggering the correct weight pressure and just moving much more athletically and using the ground correctly. Now it was really a question of, well, how do you start the downswing? Now Lynn kind of falls into a category which I see many amateur golfers fall into, which is initiating the start of the downswing by sort of allowing the trail hip to move forward. Now the, the problem that you have with this type of motion is that it doesn't necessarily mean that you are going to swing over the top, but it kind of means you're always getting closer to the ball, so it saturates space for where the hands and arms can move into, hence Lynn's sort of flippy nature at the beginning part of the session. It's not something we want to do. So what we now need to start doing was sort of experimenting with the feeling of, well, we can't sort of fire this trail side forward, but what we can do, Lynn, is we can actually sort of pull this lead hip back. And the way in which we did this, well, a few ways. First of all, we tried to just concentrate on pulling the lead hip back, but uh, didn't necessarily have a massive influence on Lynn's athleticism. She kind of looked like the upper body was just getting sort of left behind. And it wasn't until we started to chat about this idea of allowing the chest and, and almost the head to move through that things then started to look much, much better. And as the session progressed, we just started to chat about things slightly differently. So we knew that we needed to stop this sort of movement towards the ball and we needed to try and get this hit back. But 
there are different ways to do this. And one of the ways that really sort of, you know, Lynn found was much more beneficial was actually getting concentrating more on the sort of top half. So what I tried to do to Lynn is I tried to get her to think a little bit more about the sort of rib cage and if you like the sort of side bend movement in the golf swing. Because as we can see with the professional golfer coming up to gears now, what we need to be doing is we need to find a way to sort of stay over the golf ball even in this post impact position. And that's never going to happen if that sort of trail hip comes forward. You would need to be more this way. So the feeling that I tried to get Lynn to do by using actually a pool noodle there was to get the feeling that if we located where the lower part or the lowest rib cage was, and this is a great drill that I once read from Calvin Mihira, is to get the feeling of the rib cage actually rising up. So on this lead side, getting the feeling if I sort of swing towards you guys, that this rib cage is actually coming more upward and you almost get more of an activation in and around the obliques. And again, this just helps with this feeling of extension, getting the weight off the lead leg and opening up the pelvis so you can swing the arms through. And through experimentation and lots of encouragement towards from myself towards Lynn, we started to get something that was looking close to where we wanted it. We started to get this these rehearsal swings where Lynn was keeping the hands and arms more in front of the chest in the backswing position, controlling and stabilizing this leg and not excessively moving and making it too complicated. And then from there, starting to transition successfully and also start to get a much better feeling of what we're trying to do coming in towards that impact area. And that's a great feeling that will work for many golfers out there. And what will also work for many golfers out there is this video. Now this video just kind of simplifies a lot of the stuff that we've been talking about today and a great drill that you can do at home just so that you can get the feelings of some of the motions that we've talked about. Hopefully you guys enjoyed the video. Catch up with you really soon.